frequent requests from you guys have been the ability to add some type of scoring in the game. So we're going to add a basic uh, distance counter that you can use as a score keeper. And we're going to add some UI for that. So let's go on game object and UI and hit uh, canvas. So that creates a canvas for us and I'd like to keep it on top. And uh, now that we're going to work with UI, I like to take my game window and either use it on a separate screen or at least divide the area so I can see something. Uh, so we're going to have some type of score counter up here or distance counter. Uh, so well, let's go and add that UI and uh, let's use a regular panel as a start. Uh, so uh, now we can see that okay, our, our screen has turned sort of grayish here. And uh, if we just make it red and put the alpha to 100, we can see that okay, our panel is now taking up 100% of the screen, uh, which is probably not something we want. So let's just shift this over into to a normal sort of um, centered mode uh, with the anchor on the center and now we can specify the width of this thing so let's uh, just make it 150 as a start and now if we have a look at our panel here we can see that okay it's it's there and we need to see it in the game window here so let's uh, Take our canvas, hit F to focus, and then uh, press 2D. So now we're in the 2D world and we can work with the canvas. And uh, the thing with uh, our canvas here right now is that it's set to uh, constant pixel size. So if we would take our, uh, our little panel here and put it in our left corner. Uh, so it looks right right now. Uh, but if we change our resolution here, so I've added a few resolutions, so let's say 500. Uh, now the UI is no longer visible uh, because it's outside of the screen space. And uh, to handle this case, we can uh, make a better UI. So let's change our screen size here to 1920 times 1080, which is the like default resolution. And uh, let's just see the whole thing. Uh, so that's a resolution that a lot of uh, people have on their monitors, right? And if we take our uh, little uh, panel here and uh, we attach it to the left part of the screen. Now we want this panel to remain there at all times. So regardless of the resolution. So first of all, in Canvas, let's change the UI scale mode to scale with screen size. And let's put in our reference, which is 1920 times 1080. That's the resolution that we are using when we are developing. And that's the, well, a, a pretty common resolution. And then we can decide, okay, how are we going to scale this? Are we going to match with width or height? So right now it's matching only with width and not with height, uh, which is uh, fairly standard, I would say, uh, because uh, on wide screens, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's getting wider, right? So uh, it's a frequent uh, thing where, where, where wide screens are being used and uh, the why the height of the screen is not uh, that much influenced. So let's just leave it at 100% uh, width uh, for now. And um, so if we take our panel here uh, or our resolution and change it again to 500, we can see that, oh, awesome. Uh, our panel is uh, on the screen which is great, but it's not on the top left corner where we want it, right? So well, let's uh, have a look at our, uh, or change back into our regular resolution. And uh, then um, let's take our uh, panel here. And now we can instead say that, okay, our panel, actually it's going to be anchored to left uh, corner. So our anchor is now uh, to the left corner, which we can see from this uh, sign here. And uh, the panel itself is a little bit small, so let's make it 180 times 60. Uh, so now we can see that okay, our panel is, is sticking outside of the screen to the left because it's, this is the border, right? And uh, when I'm working with the UI like this, I want to change our anchor point. So this is our anchor point. And if I put it here and drop it, it's going to be on the left uh, upper corner. Uh, so our pivot point here is saying some minus value, but in reality it's zero. So let's just change it to zero because I hate when Unity is doing that. So it's zero. And the other value is one, which it, well, rounds to some weird float instead. But 
So our reference point is here now, and now we can look at our position X. So it's minus 18, right? But we want it to be inside of the screen space. So put it zero and position Y is zero as well. So now we have the true upper left corner. And if we change our resolution to 500, it's gonna be there. And we can uh, change some other funky resolutions and it's always going to be there, right? So now we have a UI that is sort of responsive. We might want to move it a little bit away from the side of the screen though, maybe like 10 and uh, minus 10 here, something like that. We can also drag around, but yeah, I like the numbers to change them directly here. Okay, so now I have our panel. Let's just make it gray instead and uh, something like that. And in this one, we want uh, our text to show up. So we're going to add uh, the support to add UI text. So let's go game object UI and let's select text from text mesh pro. And uh, then we are getting this uh, dialogue to import stuff and just hit import TMP essentials. And then we can close it. And uh, now we have our text mesh here and uh, we want it to be a child of our uh, panel here. And uh, we can also say that, okay, our, our text here is uh, going to expand with the size of our panel so that we don't have to adjust it manually all the time. So let's use scale and uh, it's going to scale with the size of our, uh, our panel. And uh, then we have, okay, where is it located? So our text is going to be here, right? So uh, let's just use our values and zero out everything. So zero, 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 our margins, you can say. And uh, we want uh, this text object as well to be uh, centered. So let's uh, use center and uh, as well in the middle. And uh, now we have uh, our text here and it's uh, just a regular boring liberation sun. Uh, so instead we can download some better font or some more interesting font. So let's add a folder called fonts and uh, there's a lot of open source Google fonts that you can use. So I've uh, downloaded one here, which is a Rubik uh, Mono one uh, regular. So if I would try to use this one and uh, I would like to drag it here, we can see that, okay, I can't do that. Uh, because uh, it is expecting an SDF file. So how, how do I get this regular font, TTF, uh, to uh, SDF? Well, just take uh, your font, right click, and then create, and then you go on Text Mesh Pro, and then you have font asset, SDF. So, so now we have a, a SDF file from, from this one, which it creates an atlas and everything and optimizes things, so it's good. So uh, now our text here, we can just drag our Rubik one in there and uh, boom, we have the new text. But it doesn't uh, really uh, listen to our size. I mean, we were saying, okay, you can stretch, uh, but the new text is not fitting inside of our panel here. So we're gonna use this auto size feature. Uh, so the auto size feature makes uh, the uh, font fit inside the rect area that it has received. And um, sometimes it can look really, really ugly when you have different font size and sometimes it's, it's good. Uh, it depends on the use case. In this case, uh, we are going to go with that uh, because it's going to be easy. And uh, it's going to be our distance counter, right? So we're going to have some, some numbers here. So uh, if we have like one, two, three, four, five, six, I think it's gonna be enough. Uh, that's gonna be like the distance traveled in Unity, which is defaults to meters, I think. And what one unit, unit is one meter, right? So you can travel quite far. And um, if we look at our UI here, uh, we can see that, okay, it's, uh, it's a little bit uh, too, uh, what do you say? It's a little bit uh, close to the border. So we want to give some room for our number here. So let's add a margin to the left of 10 and to the right of 10. So now it's received some breathing space. And uh, we can also change stuff like, uh, okay, how how tight is this going to be? It, it, does that look okay? So we can use our uh, character 
uh, distance here and change it. So if we make it to like minus 15, we can see that, okay, they're really tightly grouped together. Uh, but we're gonna use another effect. So let's just start by adding the effect. So we're going to use an outline, which I think is quite cool in games. It looks nice. So uh, let's uh, add our outline here, a thickness of, uh, I don't know, let's uh, scale it up a bit. And uh, yeah, 35 looks okay and uh, yeah then we can uh, maybe group them a little bit tighter if you want so that's uh, that's oops not that much minus I don't know six yeah, yeah that's uh, that looks okay to me so uh, now we have our uh, our counter here, distance counter, and it's going to update uh, how far we have traveled. The only problem right now is that if we have uh, more UI on the screen, uh, like some uh, distance meter or some, uh, uh, I don't know, some RPM meter and maybe some speedometer, uh, as soon as we are updating uh, either this uh, object or uh, anything else in the UI, it's going to redraw the whole thing. And this counter is going to be updating all the time, right? So it's going to update fairly quickly. And we don't want it to redraw all of the UI because, well, it takes more resources than you think to do UI. So especially if you're like on mobile devices and, and other weak devices like Switch, then you need to like mind that already. Uh, so uh, how can we tell um, unity only to update uh, this part if it changes well it's uh, if we put it on its own canvas that is exactly what's going to happen so uh, let's uh, do a ui and let's add a canvas and uh, we're going to call it uh, distance canvas so we know what's in it and uh, now we have to sort of redo our uh, uh, the anchor so let's do our left anchor and uh, the width I don't remember what is it, it was 180 uh, 180 times 80 and position X well let's change our pivot right so we want our pivot to be 0 and uh, Y is going to be 1 right so uh, and the position is going to be 10 and then minus 10. So then we have our uh, our canvas there and let's just put our panel under it and scale it with the size of our canvas. Perfect. Uh, so now we only have our canvas here and it's going to make sure that uh, any redraw or any changes to this is just updating this little part and not our whole UI. So we're conserving some power and uh, our, that results in better frame rates and uh, less power consumption on your uh, handheld device. So let's do some coding. Uh, we need to create a new script to handle our UI here. So uh, let's... Uh, go and uh, create a new folder here call it UI and we need a new script call it UI handler and open that in uh, your editor the first thing we're going to do we're going to uh, add a reference to our uh, text mesh pro from the editor and uh, before we do that let's add using TM pro right so uh, after we have done that, we can uh, add a serialized field. So uh, let's add our serialized field. And uh, let's add our text mesh pro U GU GUI. And then call it distance travel text. But to feed this uh, text mesh pro uh, with some distance, we need to uh, expose our distance traveled in the car handler. And uh, this script will need access to our car handler. So uh, let's add that, uh, references and uh, car handler and call it player car handler. And uh, then we are going to find our player car handler here. So let's do it in the, our awake function. And in our awake function, let's do player handler. And then it's equal to a game object, find object with tag. 
uh, use the tag player and get component car handler and then we are done with our awake function so now we can uh, run our update function and uh, use this information from our player car handler to update uh, the text but there is nothing in our play car handler that exposes the information how far the player has traveled so let's go into our car uh, handler here and let's uh, scroll to the bottom and uh, here we need some type of statistics to track how far a player has traveled so to figure that out we need to know where the player has started what's the starting point so uh, let's add some stats float and call it call start position z so in this game it's only going forward so uh, if the car is traveling forward then that's the only direction we need to care about if it would uh, contain turns or anything like that then maybe we need to do some more elaborate thing to figure out how far they have traveled but our game is simple so it's easy so uh, then let's uh, add our distance traveled a float and uh, we are going to say that okay this is going to be equal to zero as a start and then we're going to calculate what it is um, but we need to expose a property for our ui handler to be able to read this value so let's add a public float and then distance traveled and make it a property and reference to our distance traveled so whatever is in this value is going to be in this property so uh, let's uh, calculate our distance traveled so uh, let's just add some good uh, uh, commenting so update distance uh, traveled and uh, distance traveled is going to be equal to uh, the transform position z so the z direction wherever we are minus uh, the start position so uh, the start position is something that we need to uh, get as well right because uh, right now it's just zero and uh, maybe your sort of spawning the player at another position so we need to store our start position here in the start function so let's add that car start position z is equal to the transform position z in the start okay so uh, now we have exposed that and we have calculated our distance traveled so now we can use it in our update function here so distance traveled uh, text is uh, dot text is equal to so what is going to be uh, it's going to be the player car handler distance traveled to string right so if we would do this then uh, we would uh, have a float because this is a float and it would show some number zero point and then a lot of uh, decimals so instead we want to format this into something that is uh, more readable uh, and uh, in our UI now we are sort of using um, uh, our distance counter is uh, sort of looking like it's does on a car right so uh, it doesn't start with one two three four it has a lot of zeros so uh, so let's format our text here so we're going to say that okay our two string here has a string format and it's going to use these leading zeros so one two three four five six so the first value when our distance is increased is going to be one and then two and then three uh, so this is going to uh, be counting up and uh, since we're using our format here uh, it this is without any decimals so it will look prettier so let's save that and go back into unity now we need to use uh, our code here so let's drag and drop our ui handler and make sure that we have distance travel text and assign that text and let's change our text here so distance text and canvas we might call it main canvas so we know what it is okay so let's save that and uh, try it okay so now we can see that okay great our uh, counter here is uh, updating and when we slow down it's updating slow so uh, yeah that's uh, adding uh, our distance travel I'd like to give a shout out to our Patreon supporters. It helps us with every single contribution that we can get. So please consider supporting us on Patreon. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.